Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we're going to take a look at a new project we've been working on. The code name has been Part Ninja. It's a discrete component tester that can take a transistor, resistor, capacitor, FAT, all sorts of different parts, and it can determine the pinout and also the key values like gain. So how does it work? Well, you just take your discrete component like this and you stick it in the tester. And the tester does a series of tests to determine what the part is. In this case, it's an NPN transistor with a gain of 36. It also shows the pinout. The collector is pin 3, the base is pin 2, and the emitter is pin 1. That'll save you a run for the data sheet when you're building a project and you're not sure which part's which. It also helps with reverse engineering and figuring out how something else is built. So let's try a few other parts too. Now this part's a PNP transistor, the opposite of the first one. You see we show the gain and the pinout again. Now let's try a different part. Let's try a FET. This time it shows that we found an NFET, an N-type MOSFET. It also shows the voltage at which the gate actually switches on and off. Here we're estimating about 4 volts. It also shows the pinouts for the gate, drain, and source pins. Now it does have a few shortcomings. If you're familiar with FETs, you know that some of them need 10, 20 volts, or even more for the gate to actually switch from off to on. Since this is a 5 volt pick doing the testing, it's not going to be possible to figure out all the different parts. But for most of the stuff you'll encounter in digital electronics, it'll do the job. Now let's take a quick look at how it works. When you put a part into the tester, it manipulates the pins all different ways and tries to find a combination that it understands and recognizes. For example, for an MPN transistor, if you put 5 volts to the collector through a resistor and 5 volts to the base through a resistor, the transistor should turn on and current should flow from the collector to the emitter. Now when this happens, the voltage after the resistor on the base should drop to about 0.6 volts. The voltage at the collector after the resistor should drop to nearly 0 volts too. So if you apply these settings to the pins, and then you find these values, you can be reasonably certain that you found an MPN transistor. Tests for other parts are really similar. If this was an NFET instead of an NPN transistor, we'd have closer to 5 volts here instead of 0.6. That subtle difference is all we need to tell the difference between an NPN transistor and an NFET. Tests for all the parts are pretty similar, and our goal is to eventually have a wiki page that shows what each test setup looks like, what we look for, and then the equations we use to determine the critical values. This is just version 1 of the tester. We've already updated to a new revision. The circuit board looks like this. So you can see it's a much bigger circuit board which gives more areas for breakouts. Here along the top we've added footprints for surface mount parts. That way when you're debugging, repairing, or reverse engineering some sort of surface mount device, you can use tweezers to hold your parts onto these spaces and find out what they are too. That'll be a big help because there's hardly ever markings on small surface mount parts, especially the smallest ones. Version 2 is a lot closer to what we'll put into production, but I imagine there will be at least one or two more revisions before we're completely done with this project. It's a fairly large and involved project and we want to make sure that we get it right. Well that's it for this week's workshop video. We'll be back next week to talk about our new standard PCB sizes and footprints. We're really excited about this project. Don't miss it. Thank you for watching.